Good morning, everyone. Let's get all this up here. Get some people on. Oh my gosh, I had fun this weekend. I had total fun. Talk about that. Okay, brighten this up. That helps. Okay. I hope you had a good weekend too. It's supposed to rain today. Well, that's a big fat joke, which makes me sad. That's what I'm looking for. Yay! I had a blast. Oh, wait, before we get started, before we get started, let's 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 say it's National Pet Day. <laughs> I got this. This is um this is so vague for me to see the lighting. This is from Carol. It was her kitty that's no longer with her. <laughs> now that is a fleeping, fleeping, flipping cool cat. I had a cat when I was a little girl, Casper, that we could dress up in doll clothes and push in a carriage all over the house. That was a cool cat. And also, uh, Casper would play catch. We'd take a wax paper, put it around a walnut, throw it down the wood floor, and bring it on back. You do realize that was Jack Sparrow. That was Jack Sparrow? Yeah, the cat was, yes, exactly. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jack Sparrow. Speaking about Sparrow, she's still with us. And the reason I named her Sparrow was because of all the eye makeup. Okay, because, uh, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow had all the eye makeup. So when people don't know if Sparrow is a girl or boy, I say, well, please just look at that, please. <laughs> so anyways, had a ball this weekend. It was the Modesto quilt show that I was the featured artist. And I've been working with Liz Abel. And she booked me before covid and then, of course, everything just, you know, blew up. And so we picked a date that I could do it. I mean, it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And then they found out that the place that they want, they normally use, was not available or I don't know exactly what. I can tell you that the Modesto Guild always puts on a really good quilt show. And so I was very honored to be their uh, featured, featured artist. But also, above and beyond, they really took good care of my dad because <laughs> he would sell his quilt frames there. So, okay, if you're just logging on, we are going to work on the neutrals quilt today, but I just want to share with you this experience. Uh, it, so what happened was, this is a lemonade situation. When they found out they couldn't have the place that they normally have downtown, and I can't remember why, um, they went out to the the ag the college and they could secure the barn um they call it the arena or something like that in the middle of it which this is one side of it um on the middle of it is like where they do shows and all that and apparently a week ago in this room there were pigs and goats and all that good stuff and it was charming and my thought was and they got charged a tenth of what it would have been in the professional building. I wrote them this morning and I said it felt a lot like Sweet Home Alabama, which it was just an extraordinary event. And then they had all these adorable little ag students out there out helping us unload stuff, put up quills. I mean, it was just absolutely magnificent. So here is my little corner that they gave me. And Liz, Liz got the pictures. She was up on a cherry picker getting these pictures. And it was just completely total fun. Now, one of the things that happened, which was really cool, is somebody came and said that they were from um, San Antonio, Texas. And she just happened to be at her daughter's or whatever in the area and saw this and came to the show. And so, hi, that made me really happy. And then another gal called and said, well, my sister's from Texas. And I said, no, I already met her. And she said, no, she told me about this. So I came over. So I'm so glad I brought this to you via 
you know, Facebook because I think there were people that wouldn't know about it. And truly, always Modesto puts on a good show. So I've got, okay, so what is this? Oh, my corner. Now look right here. What is at the bottom of the screen? Yep, you got it. It is here. Judy's quilt. It is beautiful. And the quilting that she did it on it was just exquisite. And I was the lucky camper that got to sit and watch this um, the whole time. Oh, everybody was so happy. I just, they were so happy. So then also then Pam was a featured guild member. Oh, look what she did. And she used cherry wood. And I walked by and I looked at it and I go, oh man, this is beautiful. I, you know, and I'm thinking, but that's, that's not the right background. What did she do? What did she do? So what she did was she actually went to Spoonflower and picked out fabric that never would have crossed my mind as a place to shop for fabric. She didn't design it. She just bought it there. So if you are stuck for something, think about spoon flowers. Now let's look at it again. She was concerned the background was too busy, and I think it is spot on. And Mandel's cherry woods look good. Okay, so you always see fun things when you're at quilt shows. Always. Back to National Pet Day. <laughs> look at that. Oh my gosh. John. Judy Flynn says every day is National Pet Day. Oh, Judy Flynn just, Trudy. Trudy just said every day is National Pet Day. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I'm so glad she let me take a picture. And um, I love the shoes. Oh, the dog hated the shoes when I have to assume she got them on the dog. I don't want to assign a gender to the dog, but I'm just saying there's a lot of pink going on there. And I remember I took Lizzie, our dog, for a walk one time when it was hot and I burned her paws. I didn't know you could do that. And so that um, helps with that. Then um, Pam came by. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. The, this gal came by and I didn't get your name. That was really dumb, dumb. But she finished her baskets quilt. And I think it is just fabulous. You know, again, everybody's so happy. And then this beautiful woman came by that is on these Facebook. They're on Facebook. And she made this jacket from the Raw Edge Applique. And, and look how she paid, I'm, look how she paid attention. And yeah, it's a little cockeyed around her neck, but if she were to square it up perfectly, man, she has aligned everything beautifully. And then I got a, a back close up and she learned how to do this in these Monday, Wednesday, fr Friday lives here at, um, on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. Then this gal came and, and, and her purse was kind of hanging down low. You know how quilters have totes? I mean, they just do, right? And I go, oh, I love that. That's cave stuff. And she goes, well, let me show you the other side. <laughs> I'm happy. I love this. I love everything about it. Okay, but here's the big story. And it, this, is, this is not a magnifying glass. Somebody asked about that. This is the camera, sorry. But then here's the biggie. Um, um, Penny Barger is known for her dolls, all right? And she she had a whole booth of her dolls, and then she made a doll to give away. You buy your raffle tickets and you give it away. And so she was really, she was loved the doll that was going to be given away because it had a cover of my book in one of the uh, baskets in the, that the doll was carrying. So I bought I bought some tickets. And then she came up at the end of the show and she said, I, I want you to draw the winner. And I said, no, I can't because, you know, what if I win? And she kind of looked at me and I think it kind of hurt her feelings and then she got it. So when it was time, to, they did the tickets differently than how they're normally done. And so let's just say this. I, I knew I was number 26 or 28. I knew that was my number. And so they were calling out numbers and number 26 one. And I'm sitting there with John going, I don't know, is that me? I don't know, is that me? No, it wasn't. No, it was the person who threw in another thing with the doll, which, yeah. And so I'm sitting there going, okay, then I must be 28. 
the next number that came was 28. I never win anything. And so I won. I, I, she's been lying down here. I've got to get a stand for her. CC Quilter. And here's, here's <laughs> hilarious. Her little quilt basket with my book cover in it and her little bolts of fabric. And the more it, it, it goes in this hand right here, the fingers, I bet I can get that in there right now. I mean, I couldn't believe I won this. Okay, so let's just look at her, her garb. All right, her little quilted jacket. Sorry, could you say that again? Hmm. My watch is talking to me. <laughs> yes, I will say it again. There, with her little, her little necklace that says, I heart quilting. Oh, I just noticed these. She's got little earrings on that I heart quilting. Her little pin cushion. And then on her hat, there's a sewing machine and spools and, and um, needles. And then, in, and then in her pocket, scissors. Well, Lennox came over and was so intrigued with this. And it was like, oh, let's try this. Okay, the first person that won that was number 26, couldn't win because she threw in the music box. I'm gonna try and, ah, I'm gonna have to sit her down. My, um, Lennox has American doll holder stand thing and I gotta get it. I mean, I know I can, I know I can stand her up, but um, I, I don't want to. No, I'm okay, John just came in. So then look at, so then there went her basket again. So then here is a music box that comes with her. But look what I discovered this morning when you wind it up. Watch the needle. <laughs> I won! John's down here. Her, her <coughs> Everything just fell over. So I'm going to get that stand so that she doesn't tip over, especially being in earthquake country. Isn't that fun? Oh, and then Rondi, the other thing is one woman was walking around with a doll that, that was made for her, that uh, Penny made for her, and it was a self-portrait of that quilter. So she's walking around the show going like this. As, anyways, it was really super fun. Uh, so what I want to say is, as Terry Lucas just said, hi, John. Um, what I want to say about the Modesto Quilt Show I don't know if they're going to go back to the big building that they were at. I hope not. I hope they go with the arena, the cow arena, and run with it. Liz Abel did a fabulous job and babysat me like no other and John, but everybody did there. It's just such a kind group of people and, and kids were involved and I mean, all of that. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you this. So one mom had her little kids there and she let them each get a half a yard of fabric. And I used to do that with a dare. And the little girl, just a little girl, chose fabric with marijuana leaves on it. <laughs> the mom goes to John, I'm going to make pot holders. <laughs> Isn't that fab? Just completely fab. So anyways, that was my weekend. Um, and I, it was just fabulous. And we were home within an hour and I was on the couch having an adult uh, beverage watching Bridgerton, the second, the second series, which is whew, so good. Okay, so let's talk about what we're doing here today. All right. Hopefully, you've all made your little four patches, okay? Hopefully, you've made all your little four patches. And I want you to look very carefully, and I'll, come, I'll circle back around to this at the end, how the white is going straight down the middle. It's, so you want to really make sure you position it that way. But what we're going to talk about today are the half square triangles. And there are so many ways to do it, just, just so many ways to do it. And so I'm going to go through some of them. And it was interesting because one person came up and said she still does it the old fashioned way. So let's talk about, don't want to knock CC over there. Let's talk about the old fashioned way. In this case, this is, this is going to finish at two inches. All right. Two and a half finish at two inches 
two and a half inches raw. So what you do here is you take and you cut a square at two and seven eighths. And let me show you a trick that I learned in drafting in college. Um, where's my rotary cutter? I learned, and I, it's obviously been cut, but I learned that when you're rotary cutting, if you want to exactly get it from one corner to another, rather than be, you know, fishing all over, which is what happens, and then these people miss the point and all that, I learned to, to put my blade down, take the ruler, butt it up, and I'm using the wrong side of my quilter select ruler so that it will slide, butt it up to the other side, and then cut. And then you're only fishing one plate, one side or the other. When I taught my stars class, I made people do it this way because I wanted them to understand how important it is to respect the bias. This is all on straight of grain, all of this, but this is bias. And if you pull it through your sewing machine or, or do anything like that, you're going to warp it. And that is simply not good. What I would suggest, if you choose to do it this way, and actually I met somebody at this at the show who does do it that way, is just put a little dab of do a little dabble do ya on each end of this um, water soluble ink. I would not pin it because that alone could stretch things out. You 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 never like pick it up and go like this or anything. You handle it with kid gloves. How many of you have kid gloves? I just wonder. And then what you'll do is using, a pointer, using this line as a lead-in, this is on my Bernina, I don't care so much about the um, quarter inch foot and where it is, I'm really paying attention here, and I can see on my Bernina it hangs out just a little bit, and so I know that should be consistent. So I just sew in like this, why, why isn't it, oh, you know what? If you have a number D foot on and you don't have the dual feet engaged, it goes goofy like it just did. So if you're sewing and you're on this machine and it's wiggling all over the joint, make sure you've engaged the dual feet. Now, some people talk about how they like kind of wean off there. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. All right. I'm going to end and start with a little leader hunk of fabric. So now what I'm going to do is come back over here. I'm going to press it, set the seams. Yes, Marianne Fonz, you taught me. And then I'm going to press it to the dark. And now I can do all sort of aggressive pressing because <clears throat> it has all been um, sewn down to secure the area. What you want this to finish is at two and a half inches. And yay, it does. If you're new to this, I will mention I have 60 weight on top and 80 weight in the bobbin, a very fine thread. All right, so that's number one way to do it. Here's another way. You, I've got two pieces together, the light and the dark, <clears throat> and you can draw a line right down the center. I would like to use my friction pen. All right my ruler on there, pivot to the other side. I like that that's kind of lined up and it's not wobbly. What's up, John? Um, someone said that um, she was told to do spray starch on the bias said just before sewing to prevent stretching. Okay, if you're going to use spray starch before you sew, use spray starch before you cut. Before you cut, not after you cut. Now, on mine, I note that my foot, I don't think, is exactly a quarter inch, all right? So I am going to do this. And then I know to sew on this line. Turn it around. See, that goes all the way up there, and I know on this. Some of you may have this ruler. I think Quilter Select needs to make one. Another thing you can do is put this, this is a half inch ruler, put this line up here, this line down here, and then go on both sides. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine.
Oh, I'm just, I'm so happy. You know, I really do not, um, I had to take stock of what I do for a living because I was on the road like 220 days a year before COVID and I, I can't do that anymore. Um, and the reason I said yes to this guild is I kind of, I'm a member of Amador Valley Quilters, but I feel like Modesto Guild is my sister guild. As I mentioned, they were so good to my dad. Uh, one gal came up and wanted to know about my dad's quilt frame that she had. She had some questions. And I said, well, before we get started, let's just say that we told you it had a lifetime guarantee. It was a lifetime of my dad. <laughs> you know, but, but I could help her. And she laughed. She goes, oh, I remember. I remember. Um, oh, let me grab another one, Matt, here just a second. I think these might be going up as a Tuesday treat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to set the seams and press it, and you'll see how the friction pin will go away. Set it. Then I'm going to, whoa, I can't even see. Okay, so I'm just going to use the corners of it. Line it up corner to corner. Okay. And then again, I'm going to press it. I, I've got a three ring circus going on here, right? And let's see if I cut the mustard. Where's my little square ruler? I've already, oh, here it is. I've already lost my little square ruler. Yep, we did it. Now the other thing is you might wanna take off these bunny ears right here. Not you, not you might, you do, okay? And I would feel free to rotary cut it, but I'm just going to go like this. Okay, so that's another way to do it. Here's another thing you can do. There are, um, this, there's this thing here that you can use to help get that line. And also I'm going to show you how to do it with blue painter tape too. Okay, so... Let's go down to the sewing machine, bring the needle up, man, I'm working up a sweat here. And the ticket when you use this, it's called the Sew, sew Steady um, Slider, is you take the back off, don't, do not throw it away. If for some reason it stops sticking, take it to your kitchen sink and wash it. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I am going to line up the hole, I might even put my needle down, to that there, okay? And I want to make sure that the, these lines are going across, and they're not wonky, and I can tell that by this here, okay? So then what I'll do is I'm going to put my little piece in. I've got to open this up. And I am going to, wait, wait. there we go. I'm actually, okay, let me start over. Erase what I just did. This is if I want to sew straight down the center, but I don't want to sew straight down the center. I want to sew a quarter inch to the side. So I'm going to put this down right here. That's what I'm watching. I'm not really watching up here. And here we go. I'm watching right there. Biggest mistake you can do is watch up here. Now I'm going to cut it. Oh, and then one gal got a new Bernina at the show. She actually scored a, a seven, um, a seven seventy. It was shocking that she could even find one. I mean, that there was even one available. I'm like, grab it. So she called her husband, and her husband said, "Well, if Alex says you have to have it. You have to have it. Happy birthday." I'm, <laughs> I'm also looking here and here. Okay, it's not like this. This is lined up. 
hold on a second, John. I'm into brain surgery. I'm watching right there. Now, one of you wrote me and said that your fabric bundles up, so to speak, and bubbles up when you're doing these or, or gets kind of screwy. Two things can be going on. Your presser foot can be down too tight, adjust that, or you might be working with a, a fabric that maybe is a little less quality, and that can happen even with name brand fabrics. Um, throw some starch on that before you cut it. Oh, and I have to tell you something about the grunge. I don't want to forget about that. Okay, so once again, set the seam, cut it, again I can't see the thread, I'm going to use the slippery side of my ruler, plant the blade, this one over something, and then there you go again, and then press, okay? Now, Margot got hold of me and said, make sure you show them how to do the blue painter's tape, because you don't have to have one of these things. I like it a lot, but here's another thing you can do. You get yourself some blue painter's tape, and thank you, Margot, for putting up with my stupid questions. Put the painter's tape down first. All right. Oh, I don't want it on my B dogs. Make sure the painter's tape is um, not on an angle. You could do it. Well, the thing is, that's on an angle, so let's do it up here. All right. Make sure it's not on an angle. Then, using something like a Sharpie, put your needle down again. And first I will do the one down the center just for grins. And make sure that this is all parallel here. I mean, you kind of really have to pay attention. And this is one where I would go and test it after the fact to make sure that I had done it right. I wonder if that's two inches. No, it's a little bit less than two inches. I should be using a longer ruler. And then come over a quarter inch. Do this before you put it down. On the um, or put the yeah before you put the put the tape down before you do this. Now see this looks like it's crooked to me. Let's give it a try. Take one for the team, huh? And essentially you do the same thing. Okay. Okay, now you can see here what I've done wrong. I didn't make the tape long enough. Grr. Grr. Okay, so this needs to be longer. Okay, but essentially it's the same thing. You go down one side and then you do the other side. Grr, grr, grr. The, and the reason it's kind of wacky here is because I'm working around this, this stupid camera. But that's another thing you can do. You know, there's, there's papers you can buy to do it and all that. These little half square triangles end up to be two and a half inches raw, as well as these little guys, two and a half inches raw. I'm going to say something and then I'm going to come back to it before I forget. I got a, um, a e, an e-letter from Trish. And what made me think of it was if you get fabric that's like a little funky, she had all the neutrals in the world that she wanted, but she wanted to get hold of the Moda Grunge, the polka dots and the background stuff. And so she was able to find one of them in backing size. So what's it like 120 inches wide or something like that? And she ordered it. And then she ordered the other grunge from a local quilt shop or whatever. And the interesting thing was that the one, the, the, one that's for the backing, she thinks, I, I, see, here she says, she says, I haven't confirmed it, okay, is made in China, I'm, I'm sorry, Pakistan, and the one, the one, the other one was made in Japan, and she said there was a visible d 
there's a difference between them. That the um, Pakistan one was tightly woven and thin compared to the one made in Japan. Okay, so you got this fabric, then this goes back to go ahead and throw some spray starch on it before you go and um, then cut into it and then you'll be in good shape. Okay, John just said, do I use all the prints in the four patches or am I sewing specific fabrics or the backgrounds? You just mix and match them up. So let's take a look at this picture. The only thing that was consistent on mine is, you can't see my mouse, is coming down that line of whites. You want those whites coming down in those little four patches. So let's go back to this camera here. So now we have our little four patch here. All right. And the more all of this can be mixed and matched, the better, the, the fun, the more fun it is. Um, hey, John, I want him to come turn the lights off because it's, can you turn off, can you turn off one bay of lights? Maybe the, try another one. Yeah, that's a little better. One more, just for now. Yeah, okay. So, so you've got this going this way. And then I tended as I got more into it, okay, I would want this one to this one to be different than this one, but that's what my samples are. I tended to put the dark side more towards the inside, but not consistently. My, but some because my neutrals were not as distinct as these were. So I think in the case of this, you could mix match them around. But when I'm looking at this little four patch done, I want as many fabrics in it as possible with the exception of the white line that comes down. Now, if for some reason, because I want you to sew this together and I'll tell you, I want you to make a bunch of these little four patches. Um, the reason, oh, if you go to sew this together and this does not line up exactly with this, you've screwed something up. This should fit together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, so you would sew this to this, this to this, and this across here, and use the pinning technique in here that I shared last Monday here, and then you'll be good to go. Pressing is so important because little shadows and everything will show, all right? So please take your time with the pressing. Don't jam through it and you'll be happy with the um, results. Sorry, could you say that again? Why does my phone... What is the white fabric company? It's Moda, and we used Moda, uh, the one with the dots. Um, what was it called? Grunge. It's Moda Grunge. We used the one with the dots in the set in triangles, okay? And then we did the planar one right here. So, um, yeah, Moda Grunge. And I, uh, Honey Run, I swear I got mine up at Honey Run, um, up in Chico. I don't know if they still have it or not. Um, in the kits, I like the background grunge better than the grunge on mine. It's a little bit lighter, and I think your work's going to pop more. So in the kits, it the kit, your quilt will be better than mine. And I'm just telling you straight up, because of the fabrics are more modern, um, I didn't even know that a lighter grunge existed on on for what I use for my applique on so yay if you have the kit and I, I think we have I don't know maybe a couple dozen left I don't know so let me let me tell you how this week is going to roll okay Wednesday um, I did an interview with Bets White last week and what she is doing is so Fun. She was supposed to go to Quilt Con and then she uh, couldn't go. And see, Lilo and Mary Kay were supposed to get an interview with her, but um, I got to because she didn't go. You will love bets. And then Friday, I'm going to talk more about straight line quilting. I used to mark every single dang line that I would sew just because I wasn't confident with it. 
And I've come up with a way that I think ha is working really well. And some of you will go, doy, what took you so long to you know get with that? But that's that. Then the other thing is that next week, I'm going to be to VDTA. It's a trade show that is geared for sewing machines and vacuums. <laughs> So uh, I'll be in Vegas. I fly out Monday morning. And I, so I'll be gone next week. And that's why I'm giving you just the half square triangles to do and then sewing these four patches together. And then I will be back a week after that. So um, basically, uh, some of you learned about this at Modesto. And I hope you're here for the first time. Remember, you can go and watch previous lessons on Learn. If you're new to this right now, go back and watch last Mondays because that's I talked more about neutrals and how to pin and things like that. Okay. Yeah, VDTA is a fun show. It's, it's really small, but it's, you know, the people you know and love. Then um, I had one other thing. Oh, yeah. Tonight... I am going to do a Zoom lecture for a guild in New Jersey. I'm super excited about that. Having taken stock in how much I am willing to travel versus be home, um, I am doing, I'm offering Zoom lectures online rather than get on an airplane. And I, it's a win for everybody, a total win for everybody. All right. So it's good to see everybody here. I'll see you uh, Wednesday with Bets White. You're going to love her and what she's doing. I see John coming. I kind of been watching for comments. Oh, I have two sitting right here. <laughs> Little sneaky boy. I cut three. Okay, so there's another thing you can do, not to confuse it. Um, these were cut at two and seven eighths, right? Well, Trudy cuts at three inches and then she squares up. That is a whole other thing you can do if you cut it three inches. And then you square up, it comes in really, uh, I, had a little rule, I have a little ruler here that already fell off the face of the earth. Oh, here it is. It finishes at two and a half, so I can just square up with this. You know, get the, get the line. Let me look at this. I'll do it backward now. Get the corner to corner line. Get that exactly right and then square up. That is another way to do it. And in fact, if you were really being super uber careful, that's probably what you should do. And then Margo said, show my picture. <laughs> oh, Margo, I love you so much. Does that make you happy? <laughs> but hey, more than that, uh, David Taylor did a quilt of Margot's front porch and it's going to be at Paducah. Okay, come on, get bigger. It's not letting me get it bigger. It, if you're familiar with David's work, there we go. This is a quilt of Margot's front porch. I don't know. Margo, I don't know. Go buy a lottery ticket. You might want to buy it. <laughs> All right, everybody. I will see you Wednesday. Bye-bye.